What's going on, gang? CJ Curry here, back with another MLB Prize Picks video. I appreciate everybody joining me this morning. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button for me and drop a like. And also, if we go 3-0 and or 0-3 and on today's video, we're going to do a dub club sweepstakes, meaning if we sweep going 3-0 and or 0-3, and I'm going to pick somebody from the comment section to win a free month of dub club. If you're wondering what dub club is, it's my VIP community where you can get access to more picks, plays, and parlays that I can offer here in this short YouTube video. So if you are looking for a community of like-minded individuals who are trying to get to the bag each and every day, I've got you covered. Special link down in the comment section. We'll see if we could pick somebody from the comment section to win a free month of dub club now without further ado let's take a look at today's prize picks options if you're not playing on prize picks yet they're still doing a risk-free entry basically when you make your first deposit they're going to match you dollar for dollar all the way up to a hundred dollars that's a 100 percent instant deposit match so if you put in 50 they're going to give you 50 so your first entry made on prize picks will be a risk-free entry so if you're wanting a free bet on prize picks, it's a great time for you to go ahead and get started playing today. Use the special link down in the description of today's video to get going. All right, what do we have today? We got a couple of hitters and we got one pitcher. And now this, I think this pitcher is going to end up getting bumped by the time this video goes live. But nonetheless, we're going to do our due diligence and maybe you can go find Nick Pavetta on another site. Let's start at the top here, though. We got Pete Alonzo of the New York Mets facing off against Braxton Garrett of the Miami Marlins. Now, Pete Alonzo is at seven fantasy score. You could also look at the hits, runs, and RBIs for Pete Alonzo. That could be another way for you to go, but let's uh, dig in here and see why I like this play. So, Thanks to Rotowire, they've put together this really handy little report each and every day. And I post this for my dub club members to help them with their decision making. But if we take a look at today's hot batter matchups, you can see that Pete Alonso against Braxton Garrett, 18 at bats or plate appearances over his career against Braxton Garrett. He's got seven hits off of him. Two of those hits have gone for extra bases. Two home runs, four RBIs, and two walks with just four strikeouts against Braxton Garrett over his career. That's a 389 batting average and a 1.172 OPS, which is a pretty strong number. So historically speaking, Pete Alonso's done a really good job against Braxton Garrett. And on top of that, some of Pete Alonso's teammates like Jeff McNeil and Francisco Lindor also have good historical numbers against Braxton Garrett, which is going to be key if Pete Alonso is expected to go over either his fantasy score or the hits, runs, and RBIs. So he's going to need some help from his teammates, in other words. So Pete Alonso can get on base, but then he's going to need somebody to knock him in or vice versa. His teammates get on base and then hopefully Alonso knocks him in with an RBI. So uh, kind of important to look at the whole uh, situation when you're thinking about taking some of these hitters for categories like hits, runs, and RBIs or hitter fantasy score. But nonetheless, Pete Alonso looks like he's in a pretty darn good spot against Braxton Garrett today. So let's take a look at some Pete Alonzo game logs real quick. We're doing that over on Outlier. Now, we're going to start off by looking at the fantasy score. Over the last 10 games or so, Pete Alonzo has done a lot better job than he has overall for the season in terms of getting on base, making contact, etc. He's got a 60% hit rate over his last 10 games and clearing this fantasy score. So we know that the historical matchup is good against Braxton Garrett, which is important. We know that the team matchup, the overall New York Mets offense is in a pretty good spot against Braxton Garrett. And uh, Pete Alonso has shown good form here over the last 10 games or so. Now, you could also go hits, runs, and RBIs, which has even you know a higher hit rate over the last 10 games, an 80% hit rate. So Pete Alonso, like I said, doing pretty well here lately. You could take the hits, runs, and RBIs if you prefer, or you could go fantasy score. Let's look at projections for both. We're going to go over to Roto-Wire for these projections. I've already got Pete Alonso pulled up here. You can see that as for the Alonso picks, well, one of the top options is the hits, runs, and RBIs. If we crack open his projection here on Rotowire, 2.26 projected hits, runs, and RBIs, which is a pretty healthy, solid projection. Or if you want to go fantasy score because you think maybe he's going to draw a couple of walks, that could happen as well. 
which you don't get credit for with the hits, runs, and RBI. So if you think Alonzo gets walked once, maybe twice, well, then you'd probably want to go fantasy score here. But uh, the fantasy score projection is looking good as well. 9.59 projected fantasy score. Again, the number is seven on prize picks. So uh, either which way, pretty good projections here. And if you want access to these projections, Rotowire does a risk-free two-day trial, all right? It's uh, all access, no credit card required. Check out the link down in the description of today's video. They just released a new mobile app that basically takes everything that you see on screen here, puts it into a nice little package for you the roto wire player prop pick'em uh, mobile app is is really fantastic you can find that in your favorite app store whether that be google play or the apple uh app store so go check it out uh roto wire is doing some really good stuff here but anyway pete alonzo for me i'd be leaning uh either over on his uh fantasy score or i would go over on the hits runs and rbis Let's move on to the second pick, which is Nick Pavetta of the Boston Red Sox. He's at six and a half strikeouts. He's been pretty darn good at hitting the over on this number, but today he's got a tough matchup against the Phillies. So if we go back to this uh, batter versus pitcher chart here, you can see that some of these guys for the Phillies have pretty good historical numbers over Nick Pavetta, such as Bryce Harper and Whit Merrifield. So uh, Pavetta might end up having a, a little bit of a hard time today against this Phillies lineup. And you go and you take a look at uh, his numbers here for the season. You can see his his game logs. He's gone over in one, two, three, four, five out of eight games. But why are we thinking about taking the under? Well, when you scroll down and use outlier here, outlier showing that for the season, the Phillies have struck out at the seventh best or lowest uh, K rate. But over the last 30 days, that number is actually improved so they're striking out even less over the last 30 days compared to how they've done for the entire season which is bad news for nick pavetta uh and hopefully that means that he is not going to go over six and a half strikeouts now as of right now the daily grind fantasy optimizer has nick pavetta with about a 54 percent chance of staying under six and a half strikeouts so now that we have a little bit more information about pavetta Let's go take a look at some projections. And for this projection, we're going to go back over here to RotoWire. We're going to take a look at Nick Pavetta's numbers there. And you can see that he is projected for just 5.4 strikeouts today, which puts him under six and a half by like more than a strikeout. So that's a pretty good thing when you see a differential of like one strikeout. Those are typically plays that I like to uh, target. And then we'll also take a look at where Nick Pavetta is today on another projection tool, which is the bat by Derek Cardi. This is one of my favorite projection models that are out there. Uh, you can see that he's projected for 5.76 strikeouts there. So a couple of uh, strikeout projections there for Nick Pavetta. Both of them have Pavetta going for less. So I think we should go for less as well. Now let's talk about this last play. Our third and final pick, Freddie Freeman of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Now he was just at eight fantasy score. He just got the bump treatment. And there's a good reason why Freddie Freeman got bumped up. Let's go take a look at where he is at today on the uh, batter versus pitcher report. You can see that Freddie Freeman versus John Gray, 15 at-bats or plate appearances against John Gray throughout his career. He's got four hits. Two of those hits have come for extra bases, one home run, two RBIs. But where uh, the, the fantasy score really shines for me is the ability for Freddie Freeman to walk. Uh, five walks in 15 at-bats. So he's uh, getting a walk at one walk for every three at-bats against uh, John Gray, basically, is what he's averaging. Uh, that's good for a 1.076 OPS Freddie Freeman versus John Gray. So... Uh, numbers are pretty good historically here versus Gray. You could also see, kind of like we talked about with Pete Alonzo, some of Gray's or some of uh, Freddie Freeman's teammates like Chris Taylor, Shohei Otani, they've got good numbers against John Gray too, which is important. Again, with a category like fantasy score or hits, runs, and RBIs, it's important that 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 Freddie Freeman's not the only one with a good projection or good historical numbers against a pitcher like John Gray. So good numbers for Otani and Chris Taylor as well. So hopefully that uh, helps Freddie Freeman go over his fantasy score. Now his fantasy score was sitting at eight. It has been bumped up to 8.5. Now that it's at 8.5, yeah, it's a little bit more risky. When we take a look at the last 10 games though, Freddie Freeman's fantasy score, he's been covering this uh, eight or more fantasy score number in 60% of the games 
out of his last 10. Now, a couple of those, he finished with exactly eight. Now that's been bumped up to 8.5, there is a little bit more risk. Let me refresh outlier here and see if we could get the more updated numbers. It may not be updated yet. No, it doesn't look like it. Uh, does not look like it's been updated yet, but the 8.5 is going to be a little bit harder, not impossible, but a little bit more difficult. But like I said, with the way that Freddie Freeman walks with the recent form he's shown and the historical numbers against John Gray, I don't think that the, uh, the, the eight and a half fantasy score is impossible uh, whatsoever. But let's take a look at some projections here for Freddie Freeman. We'll go back over here to Rotowire. Now that he's at 8.5, how's he projecting? He's still projecting good. 9.92. And uh, as I mentioned, he has walked a lot against John Gray. So if you wanted to take a stab and maybe you take the over on his walks, that could be an option as well. Like I said, every three at bats that he's seen John Gray in his career, he's averaging about a walk per three at bats. So you could go this route. It's not projecting, you know, crazy high or anything like that, but uh, that could be an option for you as well if you want to get off of the fantasy score. But uh, those are a couple different options for you. Freddie Freeman would be a more even at the eight and a half for me. I mean, obviously, I wish we could have gotten it at eight, but such is life. Prize picks be bumping. Hopefully, we come through with some wins. Like I said, if we go 3-0 and or 0-3, and a sweep or a reverse sweep, I'm going to pick somebody from the comment section. So leave a comment. Maybe you leave your favorite pick, prop, or play of the day down in the comment section below and help your fellow viewer win a parlay. Uh, appreciate all the support. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Good luck, and we'll see you inside of Discord. Peace.